Greetings, Topics and Entrepreneurship students. This is Professor Matt Houston, and I am recording this uh, to provide uh, uh, our week one presentation. We had uh, some technical difficulties Tuesday um, in terms of creating our live Zoom program, a Zoom class. And so this is my attempt to at least provide you context um, for what our plans are for the the, the five weeks that we will be together, as well as uh, providing an interview of an entrepreneur, Mr. Richard Thomas, who is the CEO of the Island Spot and the Island Spot Villas, the place that I am currently uh, in uh, Twilani, Jamaica, at the Silver Sands uh, neighborhood uh, villa area. So uh, you will see several clips of one, um, our initial uh, PowerPoint presentation, only the first 20 minutes or so of that presentation, and then you'll see an interview uh, with Richard Thomas. Please uh, pay close attention to both the introductory presentation and the inter interview as uh, all of the material are prone to uh, or subject to being either on the quiz or on the final exam at the end of, of the five week period. I hope you enjoy. And again, my sincerest apologies. Um, we are going to work on this problem here so that by next Tuesday, we can have a live class. Thank you all for your understanding and see you all soon. Peace. I want to welcome you all to our class. This is our first week of summer one. And I am thrilled uh, to teach you all about topics of entrepreneurship. Some of you all have taught, have been in my class either in leadership or in entrepreneurship. Um, this class 4560 is a little different in that um, we are going to um, discuss specifically in a more academic manner um, the characteristics and traits of entrepreneurship and different types of entrepreneurs. And so uh, we, we have an exciting five weeks. Um, today, we're going to discuss modules one and two, um, things that you are assigned to read, your reading assignments for this week, and your quiz, which is due on Friday. I'm going to go over several um, PowerPoints that are in there. Um, but most importantly, I want to uh, also provide you uh, a scope a breath of what we're going to discuss in the next four and a half weeks in this course. So if you would bear with me, I am going to share my screen and open this presentation that I intended to create for you yesterday. Um, I will uh, have uh, here for you today so that um, you can have data points for, for your reading. Um, uh, your mod uh, reading of your modules of your virtual or, or digital textbook, which is on hand. And note, uh, in order to read the chapters on your textbook, the modules are labeled on, uh, on Canvas, but they are re requiring you to uh, activate the link in Safari or whatever web browser you're using to access the free um, educational information um, on, on, on your textbook. So today we're talking about topics, welcoming you to the topics in entrepreneurship. We will originally we would have class discussions, we'll have some housekeeping, a lecture, and QA. Typically in all of my classes, if you if you've had me before, you know my five things that I, I, I harp on that I build uh, for our class. And that's one, please feel free to ask questions. That's difficult in this setting. Asking questions can also mean sending me a Canvas message or, or an email. Um, or when we are live, I might plan to be um, here on remote in Jamaica one last time um, before we go before week three. Um, and then we are going to, uh, I will be recording um, from my university, uh, either my university office at UNC Dallas or from my home office in Dallas, Texas. But please feel free to ask questions. Think critically. I want you to build on existing ideas. I want you to be open to criticism. But most importantly, I want you to have fun. Because entrepreneurship 
isn't this laborious um, task that you have to clock in and clock out of. It's very exciting. It's very dynamic. And it is manifested in different ways. And, and I, I am, I, my hope is to, is to expose you to the different types of entrepreneurs and to provide speakers uh, who can help you and discuss entrepreneurship. Some housekeeping. One, I want to welcome you to class. I just did that. Secondly, I want to tell you a little bit more about myself, my background. Um, I don't have a formalized presentation like I normally would, but I will spend a couple of minutes talking to you why I am a professor of entrepreneurship and why I am teaching topics of entrepreneurship specifically. Um, we were going to have class introductions, but that's going to be fulfilled during uh, the times when I sent the message last night and you are to comment on the class announcement on Kansas. And then we will discuss the summer course breakdown. In fact, I want to discuss, discuss the summer course breakdown first, and then we'll get started. So we have five weeks. You have approximately seven to eight modules that you are going to listen. You're going to read and you're going to um, be quizzed over. Each week, each Friday, you have a 10 question module of those one or two sections that you are to review. And at the end of uh, the course, you will have a final exam that will, account, that, will, that will encapsulate all of the mentioned modules that is listed on Canvas. If you go to our OpenStax resource, uh, where we have um, the uh, where we have our curriculum, you'll notice there are twelve or thirteen modules or multiple modules. You do not have to read every module. Um, I am only assigning you modules one, two, three, five, six, twelve, and thirteen. If you are to please read those modules, um, read the discussion questions because all of those will help you and determining um, your, 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 the appropriate answer for your final exam. So as each week, uh, as we go through, uh, I want to um, mention or discuss the modules that we are, that you will be going over. Um, I will give you my perspective on them as I talk to you through these slides. And then as, as the weeks progress, since this is a virtual class, all of our meetings will be recorded live, or I will pre-record them and publish them so that you are able to so that you are able to see them at any time. So please feel free to to, to take a look at them on YouTube. I will provide you the link every week um, on Canvas so that you can access our, our class lecture. All right, a little bit about a little bit about myself. I am born and raised in Oak Cliff. Um, I am a resident, current resident of Oak Cliff, and, and I'm a serial entrepreneur. Um, you will see in your textbook that a serial entrepreneur is an individual um, who constantly or creates multiple businesses, uh, develops, develops them, and either sells them um, uh, as a sunsetting process or rebirth them as different entities. And so I've been doing this officially since 2004 my sophomore year at, at Southern Methodist University, but I've really been an entrepreneur since I was 13. Some of y'all have heard that story. My father um, is an was an entrepreneur and a business advocate, banker um, in the community. And instead of paying me allowance after my 13th birthday, um, he, lo he loaned me, he loaned me a lawnmower and gasoline so that I could cut neighborhood yards. And so by doing that, uh, I, I built my entrepreneurship bug. And, and, and I, I, I did that throughout high school. Um, I did that as, as I sold candy. Uh, I would buy candy from Sam, sell it, uh, and sell it at a profit. Um, or I would raise money to, to, to grab, to get uniforms uh, for my band, uh, high school marching band trip. I would, I would do those types of things while cutting yards and doing uh, odd jobs around the neighborhood uh, to gain money. And, and, and when I became a student at SMU, I was approached by an individual who wanted to start a tutoring company, helping kids uh, in mathematics and science. And I became his first executive director. That company um, we developed, it was four of us originally in 2004, and we built it to 
to house about a uh, thousand uh, students at one time. Uh, oh no, sorry, one hundred students, one hundred thousand students, employing over six hundred people in sixteen different markets across the country. And I was over training. I was over the community relations with the independent school district, and I also created modules um, to, to ensure student success at the school level. And so all of those things helped me um, build my skill set as an entrepreneur. And, and I share that with you um, as, as a professor now at the University of North Texas at Dallas. I now, um, outside of being an entrepreneur in the space, I also sold my sold that. I helped sell that business and created my own consulting firm, MLH Enterprises, which I am now transitioning into Collaborative Culture, LLC, an organization that's going to provide economic development, that provides leadership development, and just provides connective tissue um, to community and business entities in the North Texas region. I'm a model to be CEO of that company while teaching at UNT Dallas. And I'm also principal of an organization called the Trailblazer Advisory Group, an entity that is uh, formed by four professors at UNT Dallas, Myself, um, Drs. John Hubbard and John Loving, and Professor Ed Yordbach. Um, the four of us have created an entity to provide economic impact analysis and development opportunities and assessments in the North Texas region. Why am I saying all of this? I'm saying all of this because entrepreneurship looks different from whatever lens you may put on. Um, you can be a professional services entrepreneur, which I I, I, I thrive in um, professionally, um, but you can also become an innovator. Um, you can uh, go into an existing market, identify some innovative ways to, to, to think uh, about building that business or improving market share in that business and be profitable. Um, or um, you could be like, like a lot of my guests, creators, um, where they actually build their the business to uh, agitate a specific market. You will hear all of these things um, as we are, as we are, as I um, will, will, will teach throughout, throughout the, the summer semester. So that's a little bit about me. I'll give you more nuggets um, if you desire. Um, if, and, 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 and please, on this, on this note, if you have any questions or you want to ask me questions, please feel free um, to, to, to comment or to, to make a comment on the Canvas post that I will with, with that will have for you all, um, an announcement rather, that, that you will have uh, with, this, with this link of, of this YouTube. All right, so I'm going to quickly go over learning objectives for modules one and modules two to guide and navigate you um, uh, through the purpose of why we are, we are having this class. Now note, I don't want to just read these uh, slides what I, because all of these figures and these diagrams are in your curriculum. What I want to do is interpret every slide um, based on my understanding uh, so that you can have a breadth of knowledge or a different perspective as you are reading, all right? And so for modules 1-1 one, one, entrepreneurship today, we're going to try the entrepreneur and entrepreneurship we're going to describe the types of entrepreneurial careers and lifestyles, um, but we're also going to understand entrepreneurs um, and as problem solvers and explain current factors driving the growth of entrepreneurship. Finally, we're going to compare the differences and entrepreneurial opportunities from around the world. First, the definition of entrepreneur. The entrepreneurship uh, definition is the activity of setting up a business or businesses, two, taking on financial risks, and three, hopes for a profit. So it's a three-step process. You have to, one, set up a business, two, invest and take on financial risks uh, personally or through whatever uh, engine uh, that, you, that you choose in hopes that you, three, make a profit. Because you can, and only, in, in order to be successful and to be in, in perpetuity in entrepreneurship, you must maintain a profit. Uh, we'll talk about that later this semester. Um, one quote that I like is, an entrepreneur always searches for change, responds to it, and exploits it as an opportunity. That is by Drummond. 
The difference between an entrepreneur and a small business owner, I compare an entrepreneur to being a chef, whereas a small business owner is a cook. A small business owner is, it can be an entrepreneur, any individual who buys an existing business, or I've created enough of a system as an entrepreneur uh, to operate and grow uh, a particular organization. An entrepreneur creates the idea. That's why it's closer to a chef, while a business owner um, implements or optimizes its current process. An entrepreneur can, an entrepreneur does incur risks uh, to complete venture. Um, there's less of a safety net uh, compared to people who are um, operating in a corporate setting or in a small business setting. There may be safe, uh, safe. Uh, uh, procedures uh, that can help you um, uh, mitigate through challenging times as an entrepreneur. But uh, if you're purely an entrepreneur, um, the risk is either on you, whether it is your money, whether it is uh, where it's all of your resources, or if you're an entrepreneur that's created a board of governors or a board of directors that reports that you have to report to, um, the responsibility is on you. Entrepreneurs also develop the initial organizational structure that creates the blueprint or the plans that uh, franchisees or small business owners uh, can implement or follow. Some pros and cons to entrepreneurship. A pro is that as an entrepreneur, you are a master of your faith. Um, job, you can create the jobs that you desire. Um, you do not have to create some type of policy uh, manual uh, on, on, on who you can hire and not. Now, going back to the previous slide, uh, the responsibility is solely on you as an entrepreneur. So if you make poor um, employment decisions, you will have to pay that, that, that price um, of that, whether it is being less productive uh, and not having quality uh, talent and workforce or some of the baggage that may uh, exist with uh, those, those individuals. You also have time flexibility to, to be involved with other activities as an entrepreneur, um, where uh, the burden as a small business or an employee is being confined to the time that your boss or your supervisors uh, are willing to, uh, to, 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 to dictate you. Lastly, you create your culture. Some cons is that you have a high risk professional. If you're an entrepreneur, some people may not view you or can that they do not, uh, are they, not, they are not able um, to label you in some particular uh, order uh, as an entrepreneur, as, as a, in the business structure, as a professional. And so that can be frustrating at times. Another con is that entrepreneurship is highly volatile. The highs are very, can be very high, but the lows can also be very low. I've experienced both in my life where I've made seven figures and I've been broke for months uh, on end. That happens, and that's real. The burden is on the owner for the most part, and you can run the risk of larger companies or entities becoming hostile competitors and try and attempt to take over your business. The characteristics of entrepreneurs, they're passionate and motivated. They're not afraid to take risks. They have self-belief, hard work, and discipline, dedication. They're adaptable and flexible, and they have a lot of product and market knowledge. They have strong money management. They are effective planners. They make the right connections. And they know when the exit, exit preparedness, which we'll talk about, whether you sunset a business or you rebirth it into a new entity. And you'll see that uh, in, your, in your chapters. Now I want to discuss uh, the four types of entrepreneurs. Um, you see this on table 1-1 one, one in your textbook. One, um, you can be an innovator. That means you find new approaches, methods, or products that find that add value through solving a problem in a unique manner, right? So, for example, if someone uh, created, if James Naismith created the game of basketball, there could have been an innovator um, that is familiar with basketball, but noticed that the, the, the leather on the basketball is not durable. So they, they could create a business to create a new type of basketball to innovate playing. That is the definition of an innovator. They did not invent the game of basketball, but they innovated a system that uh, the sport is using uh, to, to make it more appealing. 
you can be a creator and you're going to hear from a creator later on this on this on this call and that is someone who can make something new or see a problem that people have not noticed i won't uh i i will i will not give you an example there because you'll have that soon you have market mar makers who are innovative and reinvent their market from a future perspective by asking what the market could evolve to those are typically forward thinkers um and and and, and market marketing those are the early adapters, typically. And you have expanders and scale who seek out opportunities to expand upon previously created methods, processes, or products. Right? This is a figure of nations with the most attractive entrepreneurial ventures um, by GDP. As you can see, the United States are number one. And then a lot of really developed countries, Western countries, um, are uh, following them, um, whether it's Switzerland, Canada, um, the United Kingdom, Australia, Denmark, Iceland, Ireland, Sweden, and France. A lot of these countries um, that are associated, closely associated with Western capitalism can also create um, these series of entrepreneurs as there are professionals and, and talented individuals who are living within a system, in a capitalistic system, and can seek an opportunity to agitate a market or innovate a particular product. Now, figure one five in your book shows the venture capital activity of entrepreneurship. And if you notice, there are a lot of uh, Eastern uh, countries and countries that aren't in, that weren't in the previous, pre, uh, pre, uh, previous table on this slide. China, India, Israel, Japan have been those, those individuals. And a, a lot of reasons for that, and this is my speculation, please feel free to comment on the comment section of the announcement of that is the emerging economies that these uh, booming populations are having. China and India with ha having over billions of people within their countries, um, it's a natural birthplace for innovation and funding for entrepreneurship. So it can catch up with the other world, uh, other countries uh, in the developed world uh, to create those entrepreneurial ecosystems. Now I want to discuss briefly on social entrepreneurship. This is a small, you have a couple of paragraphs in your chapter about this, about this particular entity. I also teach a class uh, in this at UNT Dallas that you, it will be a great class to take. But on, social entrepreneurs um, or entrepreneurs that focuses on a social mission um, and that social mission is explicit and central to the core of their venture. Social entrepreneurs can, can involve nonprofit organizations, um, NGOs, uh, but they can also be neighborhood organizations that truly want to be a part of the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Now, in, in, in lesson one, two, we're going to discuss entrepreneurial vision and goals. We're going to define what the entrepreneurial vision is. And we're going to develop a vision statement. Figure one seven shows the benefits of mentorship. And finding a mentor can provide you with uh, invaluable benefits. You can have coaching and training, motivation and support, advice and direction, and goals and achievements. Uh, typically, in my entrepreneurship 4470 class, I teach uh, about having a board of directors whether it is a solid accountant, a solid banker, solid counsel, uh, or mentors who are in, who've been in the field who can, who can assist and, and give you subject matter expertise on the field that you are expanding to. Those individuals uh, make up your board of directors or the levels of mentors that you can have uh, for your entrepreneurial venture. These are some questions um, and, and seeking and creating a personal vision statement. One, where are you living? What are you doing for a living? What does your home look like? Who lives in your home? What are you doing with your life? Those are some questions that you ask for a personal vision statement, right? You can do the same thing in your business. If you're a CEO of a, of a business, you will be asking those exact same questions 
because you are creating a living organism. A business is essentially a living, breathing entity that can uh, provide you joy, that can provide you hurt and pain, that can make you profitable, and that can be, help you build systems, or that can help you go bankrupt. And so you really need to know why you're doing it. Again, you'll hear that from our speaker, um, our entrepreneur for this week on, on there. Greetings, Topics in Entrepreneurship class. Again, my name is Professor Matt Houston, and I want to uh, record this message because during our live presentation yesterday, yesterday evening at six o'clock, had some tef- technical difficulties. And so my plan of action was to record a, a message so that you and your, your fellow students can have access uh, to not only our first week's lesson, um, but to also um, give you a, an opportunity um, to hear from an entrepreneur. Um, as I am here with my brother-in-law, you will hear from him uh, uh, later on, uh, but I want to, 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 to show you his face because the spirit of this course is to provide you a breath of uh, what entrepreneurship is um, that's outside of your textbook. If you notice our, your, your, your required reading um, is an online book that's free, right? Um, that you had an option to purchase a book, a textbook, um, but in, in entrepreneurship, uh, we f- I feel that as many resources um, that you can receive um, so that you can gain internal knowledge um, to build whatever innovative system you'd like um, um, is encouraged. And so uh, this is going to be a broad class uh, for the next four and a half weeks. Um, you will read from six modules that's going to describe different facets of business, of entrepreneurship. And then I desire, what I desire um, is to, to, to give you all real life application of entrepreneurship, just so that you can understand um, understand the different uh, perspectives and different angles uh, that entrepreneurs uh, approach uh, their task. So I'd like to introduce you uh, to an entrepreneur, uh, Mr. Richard Thomas. Richard Thomas, thank you for allowing us uh, to be at your house and um, uh, talk to the students about uh, entrepreneurial journey if, from a broad sense, but specifically um, with uh, the challenges we had on Wi-Fi, how entrepreneurs uh, tend to have those types of challenges as well. Okay, uh, well, thank you. I am very grateful to be here. I, um, so entrepreneurship is, is an interesting journey. So to me, the journey is about um, you know, having your why, having your, your North Star, as they call it, you know, what you're going after, but also learning to be flexible. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the biggest things I realized that's different from entrepreneurship. So I, um, you know, started off, went to undergrad B school, went into consulting, right. um, worked for most of the, um, you know, the top companies around the world, worked all around the world in strategy consulting. And let's not slow down. Let's slow down and let's not skip this because you say some good things. <laughs> one, let, let's start about your, your upbringing. You're from Jamaica. Correct? Yeah. Grew up in Spanish on Jamaica. Okay. I, um, young as a four. I did high school here, played volleyball, was um, decent enough to make the national team. So I rep- represented Jamaica in volleyball. Um, got a full academic scholarship to go to college in America. Mm-hmm. Um, so got my undergrad in physics at Benedict College in Columbia, South Carolina. Was a captain of the soccer team there as well. Um, after undergrad, um, was deciding between business and, and engineering. I right. uh, got into MIT to do my master's in engineering, but my love and passion for business went out. So I went to Ohio State for my B school. Yeah. Did uh, my MBA in strategy and finance there. And then beyond that, moved on to McKinsey and did strategy consulting for three years with them. Eventually, I stepped from McKinsey and went to join one of the clients that I had while there, they wanted me to come up and implement the strategy we were working on. Gotcha. And that's when I got into um, dairy in Dean Foods here in, da- in Dallas, Texas. And then from there, moved on to their biggest competitor, Board and Dairy, and um, went up through the corporate ranks to be in the C suite. Um, got into the C suite at 36. So was the it's pretty impressive C-suite executive. Yes. Okay. okay. So I ran all procurement, uh, managed over a billion dollars in spend. Um, 
led their M&A efforts. And, um, and then in 2020, I stepped down to work on my entrepreneurial uh, venture, The Island Spot, full time. Gotcha. Now, I started The Island Spot 10 years prior while I was um, right after I left McKinsey and started working for my client. So you were working a full time job and was being an entrepreneur at the same time. Or you at least had the thought and started that road of entrepreneurship. Oh, yeah. No, for 10 years, I did both. So Ooh, what wee. was funny is that most people think about entrepreneurship as just the glamorous part. But what was interesting to well, me... Well, first, we are sitting at your villa in Jamaica, chilling yes. 50, 50 steps away from the beach. Yes, we were sitting at my villa. Okay, okay. Um, That's, but there are some great spots, but there is a journey. Yeah, so the thing is, you don't start at this journey, right? And mm. that's why we're talking about the North Star. Exactly. Um, most people think about entrepreneurship. And I, um, I did a, a, um, a video, a post about this yesterday. Yes. But when they think about entrepreneurship, they think about it as... Um, you know, we're going to create a you know, fantastic business plan. We're going to, you know, have some capital. We're going to go out and raise a ton of money. And then we're going to jump off. And there we go. We're going to go after this business, fully funded, you know, build a strong team and start to work at it. And that happens for some people. Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of others, the story is a little different. Yeah. <laughs> my yeah. story fit in that other bucket. <laughs> um, so I started my restaurant in 20... Um, in 2010, uh, with a partner, I funded it. The, the interesting thing is that I had to keep working to fund my dream, mm -hmm. right? So again, we're talking about the North Star. Um, I had my goal of I wanted to change the way people experience Jamaican food and culture. And, um, and I thought okay, I could go create a restaurant to start at. Most of these concepts or businesses are more capital intensive than you think. So I had to keep my job to fund my dream. Mm. Right, and sometimes that's a path. You're uh, essentially burning the candle at both ends. Yes, which is really hard, but sometimes it's necessary. Um, yeah. The flexibility comes in as an entrepreneur is that you know you are willing to do whatever is necessary to achieve that dream, and you're willing to pivot whenever any roadblocks come. So I first started, <clears throat> had a partner who was a chef. I was um, the financing backing, and that failed miserably. Mm -hmm. um, but I learned a lot through that failure. I learned, you know, simple things like, you know, even if you create a partnership, you need to document I, I, it. I want to create a pause because you said you you were the financial backer first. Yes. So you were the you were the business uh, portion of the business uh, of of this venture. Yes. Which also means you had to have capital. You had to you. you you had to put you had to put your resources down. Yes, I did. Financially. So that means it's not just a dream, but you have to have a plan in order to have resources to be able to implement whatever you'd like to have. Yes, there's a um there's a a book I love, uh, The Richest Man in Babylon. Mm -hmm. Read it a few times. One of the things that it talks about is to um to create an army of golden slaves mm -hmm. and what it means is that what you try to do is is use whatever resources you have to start pooling capital but your job with that capital is deployed in a way that the capital works for you to grow and create more capital mm -hmm. right so a lot of people think about double two income as purely and unequivocally as as something i need to spend i look at it as seed capital i'm going to go to work i'm going to hopefully create more that I consume and then that excess I'm setting aside to figure out that this is seed capital to go achieve my dream right so I built up enough capital to invest in that initial restaurant mm -hmm. um, a lot of times when you're doing your first investments and this is what I talk about in it you know you want to have some seed capital you want to go out and raise some investor capital and you want to pool that money together to have a good source of funding to go go after your dream yeah I created the seed capital, went out, didn't get anything. So came back and tried to create more seed capital, right? Yeah. And after a while, after well, saving. It's like a snowball. Yeah. Right, yeah. So right. you try to save some more and then eventually build enough to say, okay, no, I can go after my dream. Mm -hmm. I invested it in it. And in most entrepreneurial journey, you may not be successful on the first try, right? Because yes. what you've done is that most plans and most business plans are great. They're great in isolation. Mm-hmm but they tend to fail when they hit the market. And that is fine. Most people think that it has to be perfect the first time around. 
the vast majority of businesses are not perfect. The first time around. <coughs> yeah. No. Well, I, and, and I, I, I want, I want, I want us to get back to your journey. But you're, 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 you're speaking beautiful music as, a, as an <laughs> entrepreneur because it's easy to teach students that you know after the first five after five years 92 percent of businesses fail yeah uh, but people don't understand why or people equate failure of business as an inadequacy of a plan or things of that nature and that's not necessarily the case you can have a great vision you can ha you can create a great plan you could even execute effectively but if the market won't is not ready for that product it's still failure yeah and it's not just a market it could be people issues it could be partnership issues logistics it could be logistics. infrastructure yes and some businesses actually fail which is funny while being profitable hmm speak on that yeah cash is king cash flow is king if you think about retail <laughs> right um yeah. i may have a fantastic design for a shirt Mm -hmm. I may think of this shirt as being, oh man, this is an awesome shirt. The market's going to love it. I go out and um, I find some store to take it. That store is going to, you know, especially since I'm a new entrepreneur, they're not going to trust me. So they're going to be like, right. you know what? You provide it to us. We'll sell it. I will pay you back in 60 days. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that 60 days in terms of cash flow between when I have to give it to them, they hold it on their shelf. And even after they sell it or after I give it to them, they'll pay me for that product 60 days later. Right? Or return it to me 60 days later if it doesn't mm -hmm. sell. Um, now you're back up from the store. That's just a retail part. To make the shirt to get it to the store, to pay, yeah. I have to hire only <laughs> have to hire people and convert that garment, whatever I'm doing, update, updated, modified, to get it to be able to ship it and pay for shipping and sell it to the store. Packaging, so, packaging boxing, all of that. transportation. Step back from <laughs> my part of it. I have to go buy that garment. And sometimes the movement from, from me getting the, 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 the raw material to shipping it out to the store, maybe two weeks. Let's mm -hmm. consider that. It takes us two weeks to make the garments. And maybe another week to ship it to them, mm -hmm. to their warehouse for them to distribute it to themselves. So that's 60 days and another three weeks. The next part is I got to buy it. Now, yeah, this, this vendor doesn't really trust me because I'm new, right? So then I have to pay them cash on demand, uh, cash and delivery. So they send me the product. And probably in a premium too. Yes. Because of no relationship. And no scale. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I spent money today and I'm not going to get money back. And even sometimes it's even before cash and delivery. It's cash on order and then they ship it to me. They want to make sure that I'm mm. buying it from them. Mm. So... Say it takes me, it takes them two weeks to ship it to me. So I have three weeks to convert it, two weeks before they get it me the, the raw material. Um, so I got five weeks, which is like 35 days, plus the other 60 days that it takes the people to pay me. So I have 95 days of cash to cover. Mm. So on the books, technically, I am making a profit on these shirts and I'm covering all my costs. But I don't have enough runway to cover 90 days float of cash. Right. So I can be profitable, but bankrupt. Because a lot of people, when they're growing, you have to go out and raise more cash to do that. Um, and that's sometimes what kills businesses. So businesses fail for a myriad of reasons. Mine originally failed from a partnership challenge, right? It mm -hmm. took us a first year. So we fit that, uh, that five-year window mm -hmm. where the partnership didn't work. We closed on that and we restarted. I restarted on my own. Um, same concept, same business, same name. But the first iteration fails. And sometimes people don't realize that, that even in that five-year window... You can have a business that fails and restarts mm. with a new vision, a new way, a new approach. And that's what we call the pivot, right? The pivot. Power you, of the pivot. Yeah. You want to learn from what the market and the environment gave you as insight. Mm -hmm. And then you want to build something that's better the next time around. And that's what I was working on with the restaurants. But the challenge for me in that is that um, there's a learning in that process as an entrepreneur that you need resources to give you the freedom to learn, right? Mm -hmm. So for most people, they think about this as, I come up with a great idea, I get it to market, and I'm gonna have a home run. And if I don't, it's a failure. It's not truly a failure in, in, in the general sense of a failure. It's just 
you got more information that you need to take a, and, and go make a better product. But, but how can people who have been conditioned, quite honestly, since childhood, especially um, when, uh, when achievement is tied to some type of success or some type of goal, um, when they are experiencing this entrepreneurial failure, how can how should they not how can they not correlate that sense of value based on that failure? Because people, whenever people tend to fail at something, there's something that's on them individually that they need to improve on. Yeah, and that's a, that's a funny thing about entrepreneurial journey. And for me, it was also the most humbling thing for me. So mm -hmm. it was a duality, right? So I am starting a restaurant and I'm working there on Saturdays I have my shift sometimes I show up and I'm in the front sometimes I have to wash dishes because the dishwasher didn't show up yeah right um I think hear that same time. CEO <clears throat> janitor all the entire spectrum yes. your responsibility as an entrepreneur so at the same time of me being a leader of this organization trying to fill gaps I have a team working for me mm -hmm. in my corporate job I hmm. um, we didn't traveling. Talk, we forgot about the other. The, the, we, he had to work. It's the same time this is happening. So I am. Um, and you're building to be a C-suite. So you're yes. not just working at a desk 40 hours a day. No, I'm not working long hours. And, I'm, and we're not talking so, about so, family yet either. No, no. Okay. So I'm working long hours. I'm succeeding. I'm creating certain things that sometimes you start feeling yourself like, yeah, I got this. I'm comfortable here. I'm succeeding here. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting humbled on this side. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, I remember one time me and my wife had planned a dinner at my restaurant mm -hmm. on a Friday night we were having a live band and she had bought me a birthday gift that was my first pair of Ferragamos and I was yeah, I was nice I was nice I was tight I was going there <laughs> fresh and um, got to the restaurant we got what we wanted which is we got a busy restaurant but we weren't ready for the busy restaurant oh no so then I had to jump in and then the people at the back had to run to the line we were running out of place and all stuff so I literally was jumping there and trying to help and the most important thing at that time and this is where you have to be comfortable as, a, as an entrepreneur is that your job is to do the most critical thing mm -hmm. and sometimes you can find people to do it but sometimes if you can you have to step in the yeah. most important thing for the restaurant at that point in time is to have clean dishes mm. we were busy we didn't plan for that busyness enough to have enough backup in inventory and dishes. So when the dishes are on the floor, people are eating, other people are ordering, you need to have a turn to be able to get there. So I had to get clean dishes. Mind you, I was dressed for a date and I was wearing my brand new Ferragamos. I heard the Ferragamos part. Um, but I had to be the dishwasher. <laughs> so Go I ahead. put on my apron and I started washing dishes. And I meet in the middle of scrubbing some dishes and washing dishes to get them to put into the sanitizer some dirty water fell on the brand new fur garments that I wore for the very first time. Okay. Now, the, 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 the thing, that was one of the moments that I actually literally shed a tear. I was just like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> and it's not from a hubris standpoint. It's really from a, this is a birthday gift. I'm worrying, I'm out on a date, and I'm here washing dishes, I'm sweating, I have dirty water splashing all of my clothes, on my shoes. You know, you'll wear certain clothes for when you're going right. to work. Um, and at that point in time, you're like, am I really doing what I'm supposed to do? Because I'm successful on this side. Yeah. The other side is fairly easy. Um, I'm really doing really well. I'm moving fast through corporate America. I, am, I know what I'm doing there. But my goal is here. I'm a wise here and there's a disconnect and this is a part of the entrepreneurial journey that you'll have is that by having that long-term goal you'll be able to figure out your why mm. along you know you have to you have to know why you're doing something because when you hit your inevitable challenge and everybody's going to go through it you know most people don't talk about it but every entrepreneur go through it because that's a part of the journey yeah. uh, you have to learn to overcome the obstacles and overcoming the obstacles will help you to create a better company um because after that, I had to learn to plan better. Yeah. And not just plan on the, okay, I want that's the falling, sales. That's failing, falling forward, yes. if you will. Yeah. So, you know, in just, you have to get to a real different level of planning, which is like, if I want this level of sales, do I have enough forks? Do I have enough plates? Do I have enough backup? Do I have enough people? Do I have yeah. enough uniforms? All that stuff. You have to go through the planning process, right? But you don't get that opportunity to plan until you fail. 
Um, they so, but but doubling back to like the original um, point that you had, which is you know we're here, we're at my villa. This is the twelve year maturation in, mm -hmm. and you are working. You're doing your um, your session. I have struggling Wi-Fi, <laughs> right? Now we got fiber optic cable installed in the villa, so that's not the issue. Right. The issue is that the power in this community is intermittent. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Something that if you are in a place or you're used to being in an environment like America that has first world infrastructure, yes. we don't we think of power as something in the background. Something <laughs> yes. that if there's uh, some type of act of God, storm, tornado, things of that nature, we worry about that that resource. But uh, in a third world country or in a developing space, yep. um, that's premium here. Yeah, you just have to make the investment. So for <laughs> us, we're going to invest in, you know, backup generators and solar panels so that you can have, even if the power is intermittent from the source, right? Uh, you can have a backup to make it more consistent. Now, that is a flexibility of entrepreneurship, right? Which is, exactly. the, you know, you, you know what you're trying to create. You take the feedback from whatever's happening. For you yesterday, they, what's happening for you as a guest is that despite us having the best internet potential here on the island, you still don't have consistent power right. and consistent power causes challenges. So now we have to go through and figure out how do we solve that problem? And, and on my end, as a professor, I, could, I, ha I have choices, right? I can one, sulk or uh, excite, expect, expect this, uh, the Yelp review to be a negative uh, opportunity saying, yeah. this internet sucks here, right? Or two, I can have my entrepreneurial mindset and figure ways to communicate with my class in, in an approach that's still cool, that's still approachable, which is recording something and whenever we have internet or whenever it's more consistent, I know I can upload things to YouTube yep. if I can't do live recording. So we will make this work. <laughs> yes. But that's the entrepreneurial journey, which is as long as we get to the end goal, right. you make deviations along the way. And you just have to be flexible and, and um, be consistent in terms of your why and what you're trying to get done. And, and nine times out of ten, once you get there, you end up with a better product than before. Because now I know, okay, we're going to have um, double backup in terms of power supply, mm -hmm. right? And that's going to be something that we checked off. And then that will make this property better than all the other villas around, right? And then as you keep on doing that, you try to make sure they're elevating the whole process at the same time. So Exactly. Well, mm -hmm. and, and, and you're doing that. Even in the, in the midst of vacation, we are gathering and you are collecting intelligence yes. to better your product even at the dinner at the lunch table <laughs> yes. uh, yesterday when you you were asking us for our candor as to how we can make thing make this place an improvement and that's that's not only one uh, admirable um, because people who buy their vacation home um, you don't have to look at peons and listen to peons <laughs> about something that they're enjoying right yeah but you but you've also identified the talent that's within your space um you have parents or in-laws um who are uh, with their own right very capable of understanding and assessing um, things whether it's on the engineering perspective or healthcare perspective um you have a superstar as a wife um, who is also your partner in the, in these ventures? That's amazing. You have uh, a, uh, you have my wife, you know, uh, who is your sister-in-law, who is amazing and observing and knowing how to, to 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 get to fit things in right places. So you're utilizing your network uh, to improve your net worth as well. Yeah. And so, what are some things that what are some tips that you can provide to to our students as to um, breaking the myth or addressing and navigating this, you can't have your family or your friends be in your, in your business circle. So for me, I, um, I think you need to understand your standard of excellence, mm. right? So a, a lot of times what we do is we have others define what the, um, the quality of the product we receive and the standard of the product we receive. And for us, and it's more challenging in family, generally, but if you have a clear this definition of what your standard of excellence is, then you have those people self-select into 
mm-hmm. your venture if you want to help or not or if you want to partner or not it's like at the end of the day as an entrepreneur you make investments you spend you you um try to invest in products to create uh, an outcome right mm-hmm. um who you invest with sometimes people are agnostic to it sometimes people are like you know i can't do it with family and sometimes you can actually do it with them but you have to let them know this is what i'm looking for yeah right clear expectations clear expectations the interesting thing to me is that once you have people around you with a true genuine passion to want to see you succeed then they'll try to self-regulate to create a product that meets your expectations Mm -hmm. but a lot of times we just don't share the expectations with them yeah i failed at that at first that was one of my biggest challenges like you know i love you i want to work with you but i didn't tell you exactly what i want and as i learn over time it's like i have to be more clear about this is what i want this is something i want Mm -hmm. and for me i know i can go outside and get it but even going inside, outside and working with somebody else, they can fail as well to meet my expectations. Yeah. So it's not that I, um, by default, I'm going to expect it less from my family members. No, I think they can do more half the time because they actually have a true passion for what you are doing. I want to see you successful. But you just have to tell them what that outcome is that you're looking for so that they can, you know, marshal their efforts after that. And that's how I've seen it work well with family members. And without that clear expectation and clear feedback, a lot of times it don't yeah. work. So you have to get that done up front. No, oh, that's amazing. I appreciate that. Now, class, again, you're going to see Richard Moore on, on this video clip. Uh, we are going to uh, later today uh, have a tour uh, of the Island Spot Villa. Uh, and then uh, you will also uh, be, pre- be prepared um, to, to, to see a couple of questions um, related that's germane to this conversation on either your quiz at the end of the week or on your final exam um, the week of the 4th of July. All right. Richard, thanks again, sir. Uh, thank you. You have a good one. You too. Class. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, whether it is the um, introductory PowerPoint presentation of our class or the interview with our entrepreneur this week, Mr. Richard Thomas, um, here at the Island Spot Villa. Um, uh, Again, I apologize for our technical difficulties Tuesday evening. I hope this serves as a Um, a substitute for this week. I will continuously work on bettering our Wi-Fi system. Um, We have had the power company stop by um, and adjust the the wiring here externally. So by next Tuesday evening, um, we should have a seamless stream um, for class. If not, I will send you all a, a message and we can communicate that way. And I will prepare, I'll pre-record our lesson so that you are able to have that information by 6 o'clock on next Tuesday. Again, uh, this is week one of Topics in Entrepreneurship. And the purpose of this course, this class, again, is to give you a broad understanding of what entrepreneurship is. And so I thank you very much. And don't forget to take your exam. Oh, your quiz, rather. By Friday, it's due Friday at midnight for modules one and two. And we'll see you next Tuesday.